Right. You understand, man? So it's time to wake the hell up, man. Last week, that man, a few guys from the phone heard this thing, and I'm done with this, man. Our people need to wake up, man. You're the most beautiful people on the earth, man. Nigga, they're not the IP creation, man. You understand? They're not sick. They're not wet, man. Those are the only ones that you never say. We're telling you, man, that you're a true knight, a fake knight, a new knight, a second knight, a second knight, a keeper knight, a second knight. You understand? A cat knight, a Ruben knight. You understand? 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 The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. Let us see the conclusion of the whole matter. Now, the black starting verse on. Uh, oh, no, yeah, keep that on that thing. Let us see the conclusion of the whole matter. The Lord said, man, I don't care about the damn football game, man. I don't care about who won the damn game this week for the second week of the NFL, man. The Lord said, forget about the conclusion of the whole matter. Don't worry about nothing else. But do what? They pay the house. In the house, you cheat that commandment. Go do whatever the hell you want. They cheat that commandment. Go to the sit up here and give you some emotions and feelings, and now you can go back into the world most of the time. They cheat that commandment. But that is the whole journey of man. So I told you right here, man, man the Lord sit up here and tell me to the world of stop. This is the face that you want to see, man. Right. So like, man, kind of sad. Ain't going nowhere. You don't get to know us, man. Get to know us, man. Ain't going nowhere, man. And with, I'm gonna give all praise and honor and glory to the Most High, Yahweh. By Him, I'm gonna stop calling out Yahweh's God. I'm gonna pass it down to the next dynamic speaker. I'm gonna say to the original people for people of this earth, man, the children of Israel. I want to say an Aboriginal language, man, which means a rod. Israel, that's the rod. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, whoa, 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 Right? So that's what we are here to do, cause the uproar. We are here to cause a problem. We're not out here to talk language to nobody. We're not out here to please. We're not out here to uh check the pitch like a thorn. We're not out here to make you feel it feel, you know, make you feel good. We're out here to make you feel like what? So when you go home, you can think about it. Right? We want you to hate yourself. Right? Read what you got. This is the book of Acts, chapter 17, and verse 4. Some of them believe and what? City Hall around 4 30 a.m. A ring of fire was lit in the street. Police say five of their vehicles were damaged and people involved in the chaos tried to run over officers. They actually attacked police officers um, through various things at them, shot off fireworks. At one point, they had a flamethrower. Yes, there's video of them with a flamethrower. What we're going to do it physically. We're going to do it spiritually. Yeah, Bar bringing it out. All praise to y'all by Shem Mashiach. Y'all was shy. H-O-Y-N-Y-C. Later that night, there were, I think, 13 uh, meetups, which ended up in gunfire, flamethrowers, 
um, trying to run over police, jumping on police cars, lighting fires. So the city was in an uproar, you know what I'm saying? So that's the power of this word, you know what I mean? And um, brothers being the uh, the spokesperson, you know what I'm saying? Uh, for you, how by Shamia was shy, letting us know, letting the world know to repent and to come back to the lost edge commandments, the uh, so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Okay, so this is another uh, Wednesday wake up call. It's enough to make your head spin. All right. Um, me, I'm not a little under the weather right now, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, it's a pre recorded uh, video. You know, I don't need my nose running like Roscoe, you know what I'm saying? You know, at least I'll be able to edit it out if that's the case. But uh, the work must go on. Okay, so let's first begin with um, Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. You know, there's a lot of stuff happening in the world. Um, there's gainsayers all the time. They're saying that, you know, this, this the people are reading from the Bible and then doing these things, like trying to take away from the prophecy that's happening around the world. But there's some things that people can't do, all right? Men can't um, cause solar flares to come off the sun, stuff like that. You know, can't cause um, comets to fly through the sky once in a lifetime, okay? But these are the things that's going on to let us know where we're at um, as far as uh, the timeline goes for the return of Yahawashai. All right, let's get Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. And Yahweh said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Okay, so there's signs. There's signs happening in the sky as we speak. And let's talk about it. Let's go to Sirach chapter 43, verse 6. Today is officially the new moon. We're in the new moon seventh month the blowing of the trumpets uh high holy day okay and not only is this a new moon but there's a new moon there's a new moon on the new moon and for that to make sense you're going to, have to check out the next video but for Sirach 43 verse 6 he made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world so let's get that what's going on in the heavens all right um a bus size asteroid <laughs> has become our new moon if you will okay it's 33 feet long i believe but we'll let the video play out well, Earth now has another moon. At least for a little while, a newly discovered asteroid joined the Earth's orbit. Scientists call it a mini moon. They estimate it's about the size of a school bus, 33 feet, and it's not visible to the naked, the naked eye. It's expected to orbit the globe for about two months. Scientists say the asteroid is more than two and a half million miles away and is not in danger of colliding with Earth. Okay, so oh, also, Salakia, um, Fair Use Act, Fair Use Act. This is a teaching moment, so this video is protected by the Fair Use Act. Let's continue. Okay, let's go to Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 26. A lot of things happening in the sky. Okay, let's starting off. Let it be known. A lot of things happen in the sky. It's a lot, okay? Um, first off, we have two moons right now it just happened i believe on sunday and they said like they said they'll, they'll be here for two months uh estimated right let's go to isaiah chapter 30 verse 26 moreover the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun right now this is going to be the third super moon in a row it's gonna be four super moons in a row this is the third one in october so when the moon is a full moon you're gonna it's gonna look very close very clear well you know like you can almost reach out and grab it okay that's a super moon and the scriptures say it's gonna be like the light of the sun right well, you tell me what this says okay moreover the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days as completion right so the sun's gonna be extra bright right and right now, there's a huge X-class, I believe, 7.1 X-class solar flare 
that just occurred yesterday, October 1st, okay? And the day that the Lord, it's important, and the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wombs, okay? That's restoration. That's exaltation, you know? These things are coming, Israel. Be focused, be, uh, be on point. So let's look at this, uh, what the sun is doing right now. Now you see that the moon um, will be extremely bright as a super moon. Now let's see what is going on with the sun. Good morning, folks. Today we'll hit an earthquake, storm Craython on Taiwan's doorstep, an interesting look at an ancient subduction zone, but of course, the top story is the X7 solar flare, the second largest of the solar cycle so far. We'll dive into this starting with the last 24 hours on our star, where we do have major sunspots, more incoming, and the solar flaring is kicked into higher gear. We've discussed how Riger cycle uptick was due in October or November. Looks like it's not wasting any time. The solar flare came from the developing active region on the south, flare flash here in 94 angstroms. As I mentioned, the solar flare hit X7 level, an X-class flare event of strong magnitude. Again, second strongest of solar cycle 25. The interacting fields near the delta-class magnetic complexity zone collided and released the event, which wasn't of terribly long duration, thankfully, but was still strong enough to produce a coronal mass ejection. The flare itself created a high-frequency radio blackout over the Pacific, and as that was waning, the radio signature of the CME reached Earth. SOHO shows the CME as being very sparse and lacking significant density, but a halo nonetheless. The initial Enlil spiral shows the eruption heading for Earth. They have it hitting Saturday, October 5th, but I would guess it might arrive before that. Severe effects are not expected, although geomagnetic storms and a solid auroral outbreak are likely. Eyes open for that and for more eruptions as these sunspots have both size and magnetic complexity and could flare again at any time. Also have a new sunspot incoming on the north. Looks to be a fairly big one up there on the left. So let's go now to Storm Craython turning. Okay, so that's enough on that. Um, so you have a bright sun. And you have a bright moon, and that that super moon will be coming uh, October seventeenth, two thousand twenty four, and that's during Feast of Tabernacles. Let's continue. Let's go to Luke chapter twenty one, verse twenty five. It's more things happening in the in the, in the sky, okay. Uh, Luke 21, verse 25, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in stars. So let's talk about a shooting star <laughs> um, that's in the sky right now. Once in a lifetime event uh, taking place, taking place. And we'll talk more about that. OK. Uh, and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring okay um the stress of nations see this video of netanyahu we're going to get to that because a lot happened in israel he's reading um uh prepare a statement in front of a camera after uh iran blew them back a few years you know what i'm saying they couldn't stop anything that was coming in through the uh through the sky and um his hands were shaking his hands, he's distressed. He's in bad shape right now. You know what I mean? I don't have that video queued up, but if you could, you know, you type it in YouTube, Netanyahu, Netanyahu's shaking like a leaf. Um, This is what's going on. Okay, but let's get, let's get into the uh, shooting stars. Say hello to Comet of the Year. This is Comet C2023A3 otherwise known as Su Qinshan Atlas. During October, it will be among the brightest objects in the night sky, with an expected luminosity roughly halfway between that of Jupiter and Venus's. 
Here, it's seen at sunrise over San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. But as the weeks pass and it rises above the plane of the solar system, it'll be better visible around sunset from October 9th onwards. But if you want to see it, be quick. The next potential flyby will be in a few million years, if it comes back at all. Once in a lifetime event happening in our lifetime. Imagine that. And that's not all. Okay, let's go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 20. Um, Like, just bring it out. This is the new moon. You know what I mean? Seventh new moon, high holy day. Um, And also the day of an eclipse. Yeah, yeah, there's actually an eclipse going on um, today. Okay, October 2nd. Okay. Um, it's hard to make these things up. This is... The, the celestial events that are happening, Most High is letting us know time is short. And we didn't even get to what ha was happening on Earth. You know what I mean? It was going to start in the sky. Esau can't touch these things. Esau has no uh, way of causing an eclipse. You know what I'm saying? He has no way of putting a a, a, a comet in, in motion. You know, he has no way of doing any of these things. Solar flares, a second moon. He can't do these things. These are signs from the heavens. Only the Most High, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai can allow these things to take place. So we'll get to Acts chapter 2, verse 20. Let me cue up uh, the video, Salakia, beforehand, because um, it it's a long video. I don't want to, this guy talks a lot. But we're going to get Acts chapter 2, verse 20. Let's get that. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. All right. So. Slaki, this video, um, obviously, is, he's showing the entire clip, so we're just going to chime in uh, on it. Staff to manage the situation it will happen it will happen for sure man for sure and now that we are all electronics dependent oof, oof. i can't imagine it i think this i'm talking about uh, yeah it's cloudy i, I that's saw the, uh i believe that's uh he might be talking about the um the solar flare because that's big news it's big news. So, if, oh, look at that! One forty-four, twelve, perfect timing. Let's 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 start there. So, here you are with a a solar eclipse. The terms beta and whatever. Let me see. I'm taking this seriously. Don't worry. Oh no 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 no! Therapeutic vomiting. You told her love for giving 10 of sodium power member chips. I can't. All right, all right, all right, all right. You saw. Relax. So that's what we call a ring of fire. It's the ring of fire um, where the moon's blocking out the sun, and you can see a ring of fire um, in the sky. Now, we can't see it from here in, the, in North America. I believe you can show it in, the, the, I mean, you can see it in South America, and this is from Easter Island. And anybody's familiar with Easter Island where those, uh, monolithic statues you know what i'm saying are are on that island uh they go deep into the ground and people are like where did they come from well they're looking at the solar flares i mean the uh the eclipse uh there from easter island and that is the ring of fire on the same day as the new moon day after the uh a massive solar x flare it's a lot going on, Israel. You need a reason to repent. This would be, this is it, okay? Um, just off the celestial events alone, okay? But um, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This place is going to uh, um, fall into the abyss. This is it's done. It's done, okay? Um, now let's see the results. You know what I'm saying? We see what's going on in the sky. Let's let's come down and see the results on the earth of all these signs 
uh, perplexities and nations. Let's get to it. Let's go to 2nd Ezra, chapter 16, and verse 18. Lock in. So we're in 2 Ezra chapter 16 and verse 18, and it reads, The beginning of sorrows and great mourning, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the powers shall stand in fear. And we're going to we'll talk about that. The powers stand in fear, like, um, you know, the powers of this earth are shook. Netanyahu shaken. He was scared. You know, he was so scared they couldn't hide it. He was ready to go on camera. They're probably like, are you okay? You want to wait a couple minutes? Like, no, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, but he had to get himself together just to do that report. But at the same time, his hands were just shaking. This his unconscious uh, uh, physical um, responses to fear. He couldn't, he couldn't do anything about that, but he shook. All right. It's the powers of this earth, okay? A uh, power on this earth. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? As we're saying, like, what, what, what am I going to do? You know, let's go. Let's go to uh, verse five, uh, chapter five, Second Ezra, chapter five, and we're going to start at. Slot here. We're going to start at verse one. We'll start at verse one. Nevertheless, concerning the tokens, behold. The day shall come that they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in great number, and the way of truth shall be hidden, and the land shall be barren of faith. So people are going to be taken in great number. All right. Um, let's also get let's get Isaiah. Let's go back to Isaiah 30th chapter. And I'm gonna play. I'm going to play two uh two videos back to back, okay? Cuz they both are similar when it comes to flooding and death, okay? Isaiah chapter 30 verse 25 and there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill rivers and streams of water in the day of great slaughter when the towers fall. Okay? So these um these powers on the planet are collapsing. Nobody's respecting Israel. Nobody's respecting the United States. So things are going to clash very soon. Nobody's respecting Russia. So at this point in time, what is going on physically on the earth? Flooding from mountains. Literally. Not, you know, figuratively speaking or anything like that. It's literal floods from mountains. Let's continue. The main river of Kathmandu turns into a deadly torrent, the floodwaters trapping people in their homes. What should we do now? This calamity has happened everywhere, not just to us. It's a big thing for us that our lives have been saved. Landslides cut off almost every major road to the capital. The buses and trucks lined up on this highway are the lucky ones. A bus and two minibuses are among at least six vehicles completely buried by mud and rock. Rescuers have been digging non-stop, sometimes with excavators, sometimes with shovels, to recover the dead. Yesterday, we recovered the bodies of 14 people. Today, we recovered 17 bodies. That's a total of 31. While dozens remain missing in the floodwaters, authorities have managed to rescue hundreds more. <sighs> Neighbouring regions haven't been spared, as the same weather system battering Nepal dumps heavy rain on the Indian state of Bihar. We are facing challenges to bring food and people have to bring their cattle to the dry end of the road. As the water begins to recede in Kathmandu, it leaves behind houses and livelihoods coated in mud. We can't see right now how much loss has been incurred, but there are at least 400 shops here. While the search for the missing continues, the cleanup begins. Lauren Beldy, ABC News. Okay, so that's in Kathmandu. All right, Nepal. Um, your East Indian 
Elamite uh, section of the world. 200 dead so far. Remember, they're still cleaning up and everything. So, And this video came out a few days ago. So who, who knows how many that has went up to. But now let's take it to Babylon. Let's see what's going on here. Now, the latest on the aftermath of Hurricane Helene and the desperate search for people still missing. The death toll climbing to at least 166 people across the southeast. The situation remains dire and hard hit in North Carolina. Morgan Norwood is in Asheville for us. Good morning, Morgan. Robin, good morning to you. We know President Joe Biden is headed to this region today, set to fly over all of this devastation in Helene's path. And I want to give you a live look at our drone, a bird's eye view of the types of scenes that the president will see when he flies over. You've got these shipping containers tossed over by this raging river, almost like toys and U-Haul truck back there. More of those box trucks scattered throughout the trees. I mean, the devastation here is extensive and this area is in desperate need of relief. This morning, the desperation for food, water, and power in the wake of Hurricane Helene reaching a breaking point. We just need a way in and out of here. 6,300 National Guard troops racing to get aid to those in need, along with an army of volunteers. The death toll skyrocketing. At least 166 people killed across six states and hundreds of people still missing. New images from storm-ravaged areas continue to emerge. In Irwin, Tennessee, ambulances towed away where dozens were rescued from the roof of that hospital. Dump trucks filled with trees and debris. And back here in North Carolina, dramatic dashboard camera footage Whoa. capturing this moment that a couple narrowly missed being swept up in a landslide in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Landslides and flooding washing away roads and bridges, making it nearly impossible to get to those in need. You're cut off. You're cut off. Gonna use this. Meanwhile, search and rescue efforts growing more dire. Ron and his wife, Kim Ashby, were inside their home as it floated down the river. We know that a neighbor saw the house actually hit the bridge. And at that point, the house started to collapse. A tree separating them. Ron rescued Tuesday night. His wife, Kim, still missing. Losing your most loved one when you had her in your arms and now you don't. I don't imagine there's much that can compare to that. She's a strong, she's a breast cancer survivor. It's hard not to hold on to that hope. And the number of relief agencies here on the ground in Asheville continues to grow by the day. Their operations also expanding. In fact, the group that we featured yesterday here on GMA says that they brought in more than 30,000 cases of water. They also plan to open up more feeding shelters throughout the Asheville area today. We've seen more and more power crews pour in from all over the southeast up southeast, but again, that relief is growing, but again, it can't come fast enough for the folks here still really, you no. guys. And thank goodness for all those volunteers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I believe there's another hurricane, Hurricane Kurt. Captain Kurt uh, is on the way as well. <laughs> so, um, and the thing about Hurricane uh, Helene, Helene, I uh, believe that that means what does Helene mean? It mean Helene means like light, you know. Um, the name Helene means uh, shining light, okay, and or shining one, bright or shining one, or light. Okay, so um, now Kurt, I believe, is on the way. And um, so much stuff going on. People people forgot about Hurricane Helene. You know what I mean? And a um, uh, brother made a uh, 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 a video regarding the um, um, the sundown towns that were wiped away. So these are the places that Jake couldn't even come. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like the elder was bringing out yesterday on the class. You know, uh, it was like everybody got a little taste of Katrina you know what I'm saying when Katrina happened everybody like, oh it'll be all right you know because mostly Jake that happened but the most high cause of Katrina in um Florida Tennessee the Carolinas okay and now before they you know the buy uh Joe Biden's gonna fly over and see what's going on and do all this other stuff you know give him some aid or whatever like that but then you got Hurricane Kurt going away you know what I'm saying that could be a problem you know depending on where uh, trajectory goes, okay? So from Nepal and Kathmandu to over here in Florida, this is uh, 
unprecedented, as they say. Okay, but let's continue on with uh, the latest in news and reports. Let's talk about what's going on with the kings of the earth, right? And what's and that they're being shaken. Okay, let's go to St. Luke chapter 21 and verse 26. There's people that found themselves that, you know, I'm I'm in a good position here. You know, I got a I got a decent job. I'm a politician. I'm I'm doing well. And these are the times where people are falling. A lot of death too. Uh John Amos, Amos, um, you know, James off of good times. You know, uh Mays from Thank You Beverly and Mays, Mays died. Um, James Earl Jones, it's it's, it's a a plethora of uh, um the Kembe Mutumbo. There's a lot of uh I guess Pete Rose, you know, there's there's like high ranking names, people that were stars on this earth and they're falling to the ground, they're dying. Okay. You know, we living in the last days, you know, each day matters. So take 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 advantage of being alive and be able to breathe and worship Yahweh Bashim Shai and to actually follow this this law, this law, statute, and commandments is an honor. It's a privilege. All right, let's go to Luke, St. Luke chapter 21, verse 26. Men's hearts, heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So this rulership in the United States and abroad is being shaken up. So two more videos, once again, uh, back to back. One regarding the mayor of New York and another one, um, rulership, it seems, from Russia. Let's continue. I want to, uh, if I can, I want to go to Eileen LaPommer. She is a reporter for WPIX 11 in New York City. Uh, she's been following this story better than anybody. Eileen, were you surprised? Like, just take me into your, your newsroom tonight in New York City. You know, you're, you work in the number one market in the United States, and no one probably taking a job uh, in New York City as a reporter ever would have thought you'd be taking a job in reporting this. Well, yeah, I mean, the, you want me to take you inside the newsroom. Well, we are uh, all New Yorkers, myself included, uh, at this station. And we actually had heard rumblings and rumors uh, about this indictment starting yesterday and the possibility of the mayor being arrested. Uh, but of course, those were uh, rumors until it was sourced, as we have now sourced it, that the indictment has happened. And as you heard, the mayor released that video statement saying that he intends to fight it. Now, what I want to do here is scene set for you, especially your viewers who uh, may not be in New York. This right here behind me is Gracie Mansion. This is the home of the New York City mayor. These gates lead to the private secure area where the mayor is. Uh, there is, we've seen at least tonight, two SUVs uh, pull out of here. The mayor's security detail had come out uh, trying to clear away the media. As we pan away here, you can see uh, these are all members of the press gathered here, as well as uh, local residents from the Upper East Side of Manhattan, where Gracie Mansion is located. They've also gathered here. Everyone wanting to know, uh, is the mayor still in here? And again, we did see at least two SUVs leave, one come back, another car come. Now, we did also see that the uh, head of the NYPD's uh, uh, public office of information is also here uh, in part to, uh, you know, deal with the media. They want us to keep the pathway clear as to whether or not more cars are coming and going. But at this point, the indictment is still sealed. So uh, we don't know what is in it. And we don't know whether or not uh, the mayor will be uh, allowed to surrender before answering those charges. Ashley. So, I, yeah, Eileen, thank you. Gosh, what a great scene set. Thank you. Um, I had no idea you were at Gracie Mansion, so that's very helpful. And for the national audience, if you don't know, Gracie Mansion is the residence where New York City's mayor, um, you know, usually resides. Mayor Bloomberg decided not to, I believe, if I recall correctly. But um, but I want to ask you, if I can, Eileen, Correct. to just kind of like sort this out for me, because it's almost a little bit like... After a while, the, the public starts to hear, you know, charges against President Trump, and then they can't keep it all straight. 
And I feel a little like the, the story of the investigations into Mayor Adams are a little the same. It's hard to keep them all straight. The investigations, the who's been seized and who's been searched and then who's resigned. Can you give me the Reader's Digest version of that? <laughs> yeah, no, very good point, Ashley. It is a lot, even for New Yorkers who are following this very closely. So uh, I'll try to break it down for you a little bit. So basically, uh, over a year ago, uh, our sources had said uh, that there was starting to be a federal uh, investigation and possibly into allegations that the mayor had taken illegal campaign donations, possibly from the Turkish government. So that was one probe that we knew was going on. But since then, and most recently in the last couple of weeks, there has been multiple other FBI searches of properties and homes of people in top positions in the Adams administration. So then there's been resignations also. So just to break it down for you, uh, the school's chancellor uh, announced officially uh, retiring by the end of the year and made it clear that it has nothing to do with an investigation. He said it was planned, but the FBI did seize phones from his home as well. We know the police commissioner also recently resigned, also part of an, another raid and investigation in which uh, electronics were seized. So that paints the picture for you, all told, at least six members, high-ranking people within the mayor's administration have either resigned or announced retirements in just the last couple of months. Ashley, I hope that makes it a little and bit then, clearer. What, yeah, but it's, uh, it's like, it, it's, it's, it's a lot, you know, and I'm wondering about the the um, chief counsel. It was his attorney who also, I think, was it this week who stepped down? And, and was there a reason given for that? Yeah, the chief counsel um, also resigned. Um, no official reason given. Um, nothing is quoting necessarily any investigations because the mayor at this point uh, maintaining innocence and saying uh, that he is going to fight this indictment. So um, nothing specific. Thanks for watching. Go to join and. Okay, so there's the mayor uh, in New York City. And, um, you know, we're talking about the powers of the planet. You know, you, right now you have a president, uh, Joe Biden, who is, I guess you call a lame duck president or somebody. He doesn't even know what's going on. He doesn't know what's left from his right. The other person, another person that's running for president has 34 felonies convicted, um, it's not looking good for the powers on the planet now, and that would be the United States. Let's see what Russia is doing at this point. Russian President Vladimir Putin has officially announced a revision of Russia's nuclear doctrine, which includes the principles of nuclear weapons use. It's being interpreted as a strong warning to the West over a potential approval of Ukraine's use of long-range weapons. Isenza reports. In what is being considered a strong warning against the West, Russian President Vladimir Putin has announced that he will be making revisions to Moscow's nuclear doctrine. Speaking during Russia's Security Council meeting, the Russian leader announced a set of revisions, which include a stipulation that an attack against Russia by a non-nuclear power with the support of a nuclear power will be seen as a joint attack on Russia. While Putin did not specify if such action would be met with a nuclear response, he stressed that Moscow could use nuclear weapons in response to conventional attacks that pose a critical threat to the country. Russia has previously mentioned lowering its threshold on nuclear weapons use as a warning to Western countries, including the U.S., which could approve Ukraine's use of long-range weapons against Russia. Putin made specific references to long-range weapons that could potentially be used by Ukraine if Western countries give Kyiv the green light. According to the Russian president, such weapons include strategic and tactical aircraft, cruise missiles, drones, hypersonic and other flying vehicles, adding that the use of these weapons could be met with a nuclear response. The revision not only applies to threats against Russia, but any attack on its ally, Belarus. Isengje, Arirang News. So, so that... You know, there's that. So now they can strike first. And he's 
telling the whole world this, you know, and um, yeah, that that changes things. You know, what I'm saying they're like, oh, we can push them around as long as we don't hit them first. As long as we don't hit Russia first, then they're not going to do anything. Now they have it in their law that is it possible for them to sh strike with nuclear weapons and um, strike first. So that changes things, okay? But uh, let's continue on with the good word. Let's get to Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 11. Um, some other major news, okay, um, happening in the United States. And uh, let's, I mean, let's, let's talk about it, okay? Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 11. How ye inhabitants of Makesh, for all the merchant people are cut down. All they that bear silver are cut off. So our cash is the merchant street, the merchants. We got to keep in mind that the things we get in Walmart and Target and pretty much every other um, place, you know, the things we get are, they, they come from usually outside the United States a lot of times. A lot of things are made in China, um, made in Taiwan. You know, and that's for electronics and things, but we import uh, food, um, fruit, you know, things of that nature. America isn't really the best when it comes to producing things. You know, they're not the best at producing things, so they import. But now, since there's going to be a strike, or there is a strike currently with the longshoremen and the people that actually bring this things that come off the ship to the United States. Um, they're, they're striking right now. So how are we going to get our things? You can see how things are developing, right? So let's go to Micah chapter seven and verse 13 and talk about it. Okay. So uh, uh, Micah chapter 7, verse 13 says, Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. So the things that America has done is a result of what's going on right now. You know, we're not going to be able to, not gonna be, it seems the way things are going, it's not going to be too many buffets out there where everybody just eat and just throw stuff out and everything like that and just be gluttonous and, you know, the American way. It's not going to go down like that um, due to the current situation, the current circumstances. Okay. And the way they're talking, it seems like this could be potentially pretty bad for one reason, um, our gas. You know, right now in Philadelphia, you can find gas that's under $3, which is totally unheard of. Uh, gold is, I think, at $27 hundred dollars which is the top it's ever been so the best has been for gold and right now the best has been in a while for gas so it's, it screams um something bad is <laughs> uh, inevitably on the way but let's watch this next video um if you're squeamish you have esau he got a little cut he got a little boo-boo esau got a boo-boo and he's crying on tape but hey the man they're fighting each other we start the top of the hour this morning with a Fox 5 News alert. Thousands of dock workers are on strike, causing ports across the U.S. to close. Yeah, in total, 36 ports shutting down, including the port of Baltimore. Melanie Allenwick is there right now live, and she appears uh, to be telling us since this morning that it's been heating up there, and it hasn't been a, a, a pleasant sight for many folks, especially the drivers coming in. Uh, that's right. So for some people, I think it might have been a bit of a surprise. However, this has been in the news that it could be happening uh, for, for a few weeks now. So uh, you can see the picket lines behind me here. And this is the main entrance to the Port of Baltimore, the Dundalk Terminal. And you'll see they're, they're walking around the picket lines in circles. Now, uh, Baltimore police were here earlier reminding the picketers that they cannot block the entrance to the port. The longshoremen walked off the job at 12.01 a.m. There was confusion and anger as picketers initially tried to stop trucks from entering and it did turn violent.
I come here for seven years. I pull the um trash and the debris out of here for the uh for the port of Baltimore. And um the officer told me um to come back and make um go in there to get out of my way. And they attacked me and broke the windshield and 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 serrated my face. Look at it. Now, we don't know exactly what happened. The union members said the truck hit one of the picketers as they swarmed around it. We did see an ambulance come to assist, and we know that uh, uh, that gentleman did speak with police officers. Again, we'll, we'll let the uh, authorities sort out exactly what happened there. Now, 45 members of the International Longshoremen's Association, I'm sorry, 45,000 members. That's a big difference in a number, isn't it? Uh, they have all been asking for a 77% pay increase over six years and a ban on automation at their ports, a threat to their jobs, they say. Now, most retailers stocked up on goods prior to the strike, but if it lasts more than a few weeks, supply chain experts say it's consumers who are going to feel the direct impact of higher prices and product shortages, especially for things like fresh fruit, coffee, and cars. The U.S. Marine Alliance, which represents the ports, said it offered 50% pay increases and an agreement to keep current limits on automation in addition to increased contributions to the retirement plans, but uh, apparently that was not acceptable to the union members. We don't know what the next steps are in terms of the negotiations. Now, we do want to let you know that West Coast ports do remain open. Uh, they are a, a different union and working under a different contract, and many uh, supply chain uh, leaders have, have rerouted some of their goods and supplies. But on the East Coast, a word, it's going to have to be a wait-and-see situation as to how directly everyone is impacted. I want to let you know that, uh, again, we are going to try to get an interview with one of the local uh, union leaders here uh, as soon as we sign off. And, and if we get anything from, from their point of view, we'll be sure to bring it to you. Okay, yeah, we got, we all have to wait and see what's going to happen with this. You know, is, is gas going to go sky high? Um, are there going to be things available to go to the store to get the purchase food-wise? You know what I'm saying? Um, it's all kind of happening at the same time. We look at what's going on in the sky, what's happening down here. And, um, it seems that the most high is definitely moving and shaking on the earth. Okay. Um, now let's go to what's going on. World war three. Let's get Habakkuk chapter two, verse three, because we cannot end without talking about what happened as far as. Well, one, you got Israel that struck Yemen. Um, you have uh, Israel invading Lebanon. They got in a firefight today, and those uh, Revelation 209ers are going home in a box. You know what I'm saying? They, they it, Everything sounds good on paper, um, but they're very comfortable. You know what I'm saying? They had to get up. They had to uh, call up reserves and, you know, people that weren't fighting, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the, their, their type of national guard. Hezbollah is a fighting force. Like people are born into Hezbollah. Like they're like uh, born into that and having the opportunity to fight one of those uh, Amalekites is an honor. You know what I'm saying? So they train and they're ready for this. So they ran into, um, they stepped on Gilmore's property, so to speak, um, over there in Lebanon, and they came home, you know, a holy moly donut shop, okay? But uh, let's let's bring that out. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So let's watch this video. Because, because uh, it, it, things are happening at an unbelievably incredible rate. That um, you know, it's 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 mind boggling, and it makes your head spin. Okay, that's why it's called enough to make your head spin. Former President Donald Trump today again referring to the conflict as a possible World War Three. Short time ago, Iran launched 181 ballistic missiles at Israel, and. Uh, we, we, it's just, it's, I've been talking about World War III for a long time, and I don't want to make predictions because the predictions always come true. We're not going to make 
but they are very close to global catastrophe. We have a non-existent president and a non-existent vice president who should be in charge, but nobody knows what's going on. In northern Israel, it was clear this attack was different. This is, uh, this is, this is tough now, right now. Yeah, you hear him, uh, over there in Yo, 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 I noticed that. You know what I'm saying? Um, sorry, I didn't mean to stop the video, but just wanted to bring that out, how we're the salt of the earth and anything we say, they say, you know what I'm saying? We, we say, yo, 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 you know what I mean? But never mind. Let's keep going. On October, world seems like it's falling apart. Uh, yeah, it's not just this, it's the longshoremen, it's the economy, it's the, everything's going up. Okay, and to that point, an escalation that draws the U.S. in, might that be uh, an issue where we could see the U.S. going after Iran's nuclear program? We know that that has been a thorn uh, in uh, the Biden administration's side for some time now. <laughs> Okay. Okay, guys, we got to get off the roof. These are coming down right next to us here. Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu vowing to retaliate against Iran for the attack. But, you know, Israel has not had an attack like this from Iran in its history. And the mood of defiance there you heard from Benjamin Netanyahu suggests that Israel is going to respond with force. It's another incredibly dangerous moment in a conflict now which has lasted almost exactly a year and is spreading across the Middle East. Iran says it was in retaliation for the assassinations of the leaders of Hezbollah and Hamas in recent weeks. And as Israeli air defenses were fending off the missile attack, a shooting on the ground in Tel Aviv has left eight people dead and nine people wounded. At least one shooter reportedly got off of mass transit and opened fire using a semi-automatic rifle. The United States played an active role in Israel's defense. The country says 90% of those missiles hit their targets. The U.S. confirming our forces helped to defend against the attack. And again, this is significant because it is the first time, according to Iranian state television, that the Iranians used the Fatah 4 hypersonic ballistic missile. Back in April, when Iran attacked Israel, they didn't use hypersonic ballistic missiles of this caliber, the latest that they have in their arsenal. The military says that there have been other strikes. But as far as we know, in a very sad irony, the only person killed uh, was a Palestinian from Gaza who happened to be in the West Bank. Uh, and not, uh, we're not really sure how, how he died, but certainly the amount of shrapnel flying around was lethal. We'll have uh, more details on that tomorrow. Okay, Liz Palmer, thank you for that account. We can feel the tension in your accounting. Yeah, I don't believe that. Um, the only person that died was a Palestinian. That sounds like propaganda. You know what I mean? Um, he's in the West Bank. They say he got hit by shrapnel. He could have killed him. You know what I mean? They would have killed the guy and then say he died from shrapnel. Or a bunch of other people die and they just want to make it seem like, oh, it wasn't a big deal. But these uh, missiles hit their targets. You know what I mean? And like I said, they're using hypersonic missiles that Israel cannot defend against. And that Iron Dome was obsolete. Let's continue. There. Let's just hear, listening to what's happening in Jerusalem right now. As Brett talked about, the real concern here for Israel is that Iran is getting closer and closer to their development of a nuclear weapon. International watchdogs have indicated that Iranian nuclear facilities are enriching uranium closer to weapons grade material. And this gives them a much shorter breakout time to produce a nuclear bomb. I have one word. Don't. What is your message to Hezbollah and its backer, Iran? Don't. 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 
And what's the message to Iran? Don't. But Israel may be now launching a limited operation into Lebanon. Are you aware of that? Are you comfortable with their plans? I'm more you know? aware than you might know, and I'm comfortable with them stopping. Look, Sandra, people need to go back and listen to what Benjamin Netanyahu said just last week was with the UN General Assembly. He talked about it in biblical terms when he talked about Iran, and he talked about Moses, and he talked about appeasement, and that appeasement must end. He was talking about Iran. The United States has an opportunity to really leverage this and bring some type of peace to the region and also work in concert with other allies in the region, with the Saudis as well. But this is on Israel, and that's the reason why I'm saying we shouldn't let them fight alone, because the question is, when does it end? And that's the reason I keep going back to what Netanyahu said. He has said it repeatedly. He looks at this in biblical fashion, that this is a fight to the end, and there's a, this is a fight for between good and evil, and this is a fight to the finish. And we should acknowledge that. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we talk in Diplo speak, and we think, okay, well, this is going to be okay. This is We need to have a ceasefire. No, that's not going to happen. This is actually going to be a fight to the finish between good and evil. We are looking at pictures right now. Oh, we are looking pictures at pictures of Tel Aviv, what you're describing. Oh, oh God. Okay, guys, we got to get off the roof. Things are coming down right next to us here. Please do, Jim. Please do. They're coming down. One just about. We got to go inside. The IDF intercepted most of these missiles, but some have landed in central and southern Israel. Dramatic scenes playing out across the skies tonight. It's like the stars falling from heaven. And at the same time, the celebrities dying, stars falling from heaven. Um, Diddy, 120 more charges. Some being like uh, abusing a um a nine year old boy, so it's a lot going on. It is intense. Let's go to Luke, Saint Luke, chapter twenty one, verse twenty seven. Um. So now the United States said, well, since they did bomb uh, Israel, that they're now with Israel and uh, uh retaliating against Iran. So. What's Russia going to do? You know, it's going to be uh, Israel in the United States versus Iran by itself. Doubt it. You know what I'm saying? Um, actually, the I believe the foreign minister of Russia landed in Iran before this attack. So they were talking about something, and I'm assuming it was about this. You know what I'm saying? So it's pretty pretty much a big deal. And um, the United States has thousands of troops over there in Cyprus getting ready for, you know, any type of invasion, any type of support for Slovakia, Israel. So when they, you know, it was a couple months ago, when uh, less than a year, when the uh, politicians brought back the draft and said, oh, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. You know, we're not, we're just doing this all. It's all just, uh, it's for show. You know what I mean? And we already, we already had it on the books. We're just going to do it again. Well, you see, now you see why. And um, this is the result, one result of not paying attention to what your government is doing, because, you know, thinking that they have your best interests at heart. Now they're about to bring your children to a land that they never um, they never went to in order to die in that dirt. You know what I'm saying? Um, the Third World War is pretty much inevitable at this point. OK, because Iran's going to strike. I mean. Israel and the United States are going to strike Iran. Iran said, if you do that again, if you do it, they said they're going to make it harsh. They're going to do a harsh strike, right? Um, Iran said, if you do that, we're going to we're going to go back. So, um, regional war is uh, a lot of people are saying is inevitable at this point. And regional, then you got the United States involved, and you got Russia potentially involved. Now you have international war which is world war three let's read first uh sorry saint luke chapter 21 verse 27 and then shall they see in the socket and then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory let's get the next video queued up because this is what's been seen all around the world okay Schlocky for this guy. The thing about it, he has um, 
Um, he seems a little out there, but uh, and a little, you know, I don't know. But he puts together all these videos from the internet to his channel. So, um, we're not gonna. This is a ten minute video. I don't think we're gonna watch the whole ten minutes, but we'll just get the 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 idea that this is happening all over. Okay, verse 28, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Ba shima mashiach Now we're back with what may be a form of mass sighting. That's right, we're seeing this similar or same triangular UFO all over the place, or at least a triangular formation. It's been seen in Utah, in Oregon, in Arizona, and even in Australia. What is going on in our skies? So I want to hear your thoughts in the comments on what these could be and could they be possibly connected together? Let's start with the sighting in Utah. This was posted by SLC Scoop, who caught these triangles in midair as they began to disappear. Take a look. What is that? No, it's out on the mountain because one of them went away. The other one went away. Oh, there's a tree. No, there's no trees. They all went away. Now, that interesting probably happened yesterday, September 24th. However, that's not the only sighting of a triangular shaped formation UFO that we saw yesterday. This next one I'm going to show you happened in Tucson, Arizona. This user ran outside to try and catch a glimpse of the SpaceX launch. When instead they caught this in the sky, sound off in the comments. Let me know what you think. Now, those lights were very interesting, but what's more intriguing about this particular upload is that the user actually said, Hey, the crazy thing about this sighting is I noticed someone else nearby saw the same thing and also took video, and they link up to that. That's this video here. Check it out.
What gets crazier is that those weren't the only two sightings. Someone else in Tucson actually was able to snap a picture of this triangle formation from another location. So this is definitely a mass sighting happening. What's happening in our skies? Now you would think that that's all we have in Arizona. Wrong. Another UFO sighting in Arizona. Another triangular shaped formation with UFO orbs. This time at the Gila River Reservation in Phoenix, Arizona. Take a look guys, let me know in the comments what you think. Interestingly enough, in the threads of these posts, people were saying, wow, this is insane because these UFO sightings seem to have been happening all year long with someone linking to one that happened recently in Portland. This next quote is from Southeast Portland, August 6th of 2024. Another strange triangular shaped UFO with orbs creating the formation. Take a look at this. So we see this thing hopping all over Arizona yesterday. We see it in Portland not that long ago in August, but there's more because there's even a sighting today, this time in Australia, with this user actually claiming to see this UFO pass over their house. And it's not their first time, but this time they caught it on video. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. Interesting that they have this similar appearance, but they're happening in such far distances. Like I understood the ones all over Arizona, but then to see it all the way in Australia is crazy. Now to put a bow on this compilation, we're going to take one where we actually don't have much information on it. This was posted on the Instagram page of UFO Slovakia, who sometimes gives great detail with their amazing UFO coverage. However, sometimes it's seemingly in a rush. They just post the video for people to watch and they don't give too much context. So this did happen recently. We just don't know the date or the location. Take a look.
looking at these again, it just reminds me when we see these triangular formations, is this one giant craft? Some people were saying that when you watch these videos on certain screens, like very high end computers and tablets, you can actually see the dark shadow of a triangle craft in between. However, some point out that that they're just orbs and the orbs just happen to make the formation. Could it be that this craft materializes once this formation happens? Like, there's so many questions and so little answers. But guys, smash that like and subscribe. Make sure you check out that compilation and those paranormal videos right there. And now the details. Survey All right. We'll get back to that. Okay. Um, so, very interesting. Tri Triangle-like formations all seen all over the world. Okay. Now, what we talked about, we talked about the earth has or yeah the earth has two moons solar flares coming off the sun uh comets you know what i mean um once in a lifetime comets in the sky eclipses occurring on the same day as the new moon um floods hurricanes the the mayor um it's interesting the mayor is uh Getting indicted, Mayor of New York's getting indicted. Um, uh, Vladimir Putin, first nuclear strike doctrine switched up, telling the whole world, just let you know, I'm gonna bomb on you first. Uh, the 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 shorelines of the East Coast and down south have been closed off, due to, or you know, uh, ships can't come in there no more because there's nobody to take the the product off the ships. They're uh, protesting. Uh, Israel invaded Lebanon, bombed Yemen, Iran bombed uh, 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 Iran bombed uh, Israel, and now the United States and Israel are going to attack Iran. All these things happening. There's chariots in the sky, and what are people doing? Let's read Matthew chapter thirteen, verse sixteen. What is our? What are our people up to? You know. Check on the citizens app. There's, you know, I've seen a big fight down there in South Philly. You know what I mean? What what are people doing at this point in time, right? Let's get Matthew chapter 13, verse 16. But blessed are you, Osaka, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Verse 17, for verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them, right? So you're blessed to hear these things. You're blessed to understand what this means. You're blessed to understand that the time is short, that the fig tree is ripening, and that summer is nigh, so to speak. You know what I mean? Um, matter of fact, let me get that. Uh, St. Luke chapter 21 and verse 30. When they, uh, uh, matter of fact, verse 20, we'll start at verse 29. And he spake to them in a parable, behold, the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. You understand? Summer's coming up, right? So likewise, ye, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of Yahweh is nigh at hand. All right. So, but what are people doing? And now the details. Surveillance video capturing a woman absolutely trashing a crown chicken in North Philadelphia because she was angry about her order. She jumped the counter, ripped out registers, even threw garbage cans. Action reporter Walter Perez is live at police headquarters with more on this story tonight. Walter. That's right, Rick. It is bizarre video, but sadly, not altogether uncommon. And as you'll see in that video, whatever happened ended with a very unhappy customer. The whole thing unfolded very early yesterday morning along the 2200 block of North Broad Street inside the Crown Fried and Grilled Chicken restaurant. This video shows what happened after a female customer became upset about something involving her order. Upset enough to go on a rampage. By the time she left, the suspect had destroyed enough of the store interior and broken enough electronic equipment to leave behind more than $8,000 in damage. Unfortunately, this kind of behavior is not altogether unusual. The Action News data journalism team reports 
785 cases of vandalism and 746 assaults at retail stores and restaurants so far this year in the city. And those numbers are pretty much on par with last year. We spoke with people near City Hall who say they've noticed people becoming more and more testy these days. The vibe is always wrong with people, you know. I don't know what it is. Maybe they're just unhappy with life. So I think the city is agitated. Um, hopefully one day, one year, everybody get together and love and help each other. That's what I hope. I think people give in to their impulses more than they would have in years past, maybe. Maybe social media. I, I, I don't know. Now, that woman could face any number of charges, including vandalism, making terroristic threats, maybe even assault. Now, if you've recognized the woman in that video, please contact police. Reporting. So vandalism, $8,000 in damage. Somebody ought to pay for that, right? $8,000 in damage, vandalism, possibly assault. So she's looking at felony charges. Do you know what I'm saying? Because why? Because the crown fried chicken, they didn't give you enough hot sauce. You know what I'm saying? They they oh I said four wings and, and there's only you know there's only three in here. You know people are really on edge. You know and and a lot of it, uh, unfortunately, um, that I see here in Philadelphia is our people. You know what I mean? Not saying people around the world aren't going through it as well, but the 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 crash out that's a that's an extreme crash out. You know, um, so I played that at the end to to. Make sure we're all aware, like, yeah, sometimes let people go. You know what I mean? Uh, you got to wash your hands of the situation, so to speak. You know, uh, if your people, you know, people are crashing out, you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, you don't want to crash out with them. You know, somebody cuts you off in traffic, that person might be on his last leg. You antagonizing them and following them and cussing them out and giving them the middle finger, you know. You want to be aware, of be be and be alive to see the the coming of Hamashiach Yahushai, not you know with a couple bullets in your head. You know what I'm saying? Um, you don't want to spend the uh, apocalypse in jail. You know what I'm saying? If, if he saw Thursday in jail for no reason, that is what it is. That's prophecy. But as far as doing something like crashing out and smashing eight thousand dollars worth of equipment uh, because of a food order, it's not worth it. You know what I'm saying? Take a deep breath. Uh, read some scriptures, do some push-ups, meditate, take a walk. You know what I mean? There's things you can do. Look at the stars. Look at see if you can see some chariots in the sky. There's things you can do to uh, alleviate that aggression rather than, you know, uh, giving it out to the world and then getting uh, a bullet or incarcerated jail time. Um, get that reward, okay? So let's... Um, that is the lesson. Uh, when uh, Wednesday wake up call, a lot's going on, enough to make your head spin. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close out in prayer. Hopefully you had a a, a marvelous uh, uh feast, uh, a blowing of the trumpets. You know what I'm saying. Hopefully, uh, you know, um, you're preparing yourself for the day of atonement. Hopefully you're getting everything in gear for the Feast of Tabernacles, all right? Because we're living in the last days. Let's make sure we we uh, follow these uh, Lost Edge commandments and um, honor these feast days, all right? So if you want to stand and face the east, prostrate and face the east, however you want to do, do it, face the east, and we'll close out in prayer. Oh, Salakia. Also, before we do that, let's keep in mind that banks are, uh, people's bank accounts are looking like zero right now. Bank of America, uh, Verizon had a, you know, um, what it was offline. And um, yeah, so lots going on, but let's, uh, let's pray out. All right, this is the Lord's Prayer in ancient Paleo Hebrew. Abanawa, Shabbat Shemayim, Badash, Haya, Shemka, Yahawa, Malachwaka, Daba'a, Ratazayaka, Haya, Asha, Borataza, Kawa, Haya, Bashemayim, Nadananawa, Laham, Tau, Yawam, Wasalafnawa, Kabawafnawa, Kasalafnawa, Kabawafinawa, Wala'a, Dabayanawa, 
Wana Sai Wan, Abau, Awashai Nawa, Mayan, Rai, Kaya, Waka, Amalakwa, Wa Allah, Wa Tapau Ruff, Libel Yum Yum, Amen. All right, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Right. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Hashem, Mashiach, Yahweh Hopefully this uh, class was edifying. You learned a few things. And if you learned one thing that the elder always says, done our job. All right? Kom Yashala. We got next. Stay focused. Shalom.